right, I think uh, we are ready to start. Good um, afternoon or morning or evening, everybody, and welcome to the Mission Zero Academy webinar. Today, we are talking about five ways to take your city's zero waste journey to the next level. And we are traveling to the city of Parma in Italy to hear about practical experiences from there. Um, my name is Kaisa Karjalainen and I lead the Mission Zero Academy, which is a capacity building hub for decision makers, uh, local authorities and SMEs to accelerate the implementation of different zero waste policies. And we are the sister organization of the European NGO Zero Waste Europe. Um, if you have any questions at any point, um, please put them in the Q&A function in the Zoom. Uh, we'll take them there as we go, and then there's some extra time in the end to um, ask further questions. So put them there and we'll take it from there. Um, if you want to introduce yourself or say hi, there is the chat function in the Zoom as well. So uh, feel free to say hi to everybody and we'll put some um, helpful links there as we go. And today, um, we have uh, Gabriele Folli um, here with us, who was um, the deputy mayor for the environment and mobility in the city of Parma. And he was the driving force to get Parma in, in terms of their waste practices to where they are today. Thank you so much, Gabriele, for joining us today and sharing your expertise with us and the audience. Um, hi, hi, hi. Nice uh, to meet you. Nice to meet everyone that is attending uh, today. I see also some of my friends I met in the past and my past experience. I'm, um, say, I'm Gabriele Folli. I was deputy mayor during the political mandate of uh, between uh, five years political mandate between 2012 and 2017. Uh, and before that, I was, let's say, uh, involved in a local uh, NGO that was, let's say, uh, uh, talking about uh, waste man good practice in waste management, and specifically was struggling against the uh, construction of an incinerator by the local waste management company. I uh, took the, this, uh, let's say, uh, this uh, political mandate uh, after having, uh, let's say, experience and contact with all the networks of zero waste. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to, to be there again and uh, to uh, testify my experience during, the, let's say, my part in, uh, in the political mandate of Parma. I uh, would like, let's say, to talk about the um, situation of uh, Parma starting and, let's say, to, to, to give you a measure of what uh, the, let's say the dimension of the city is. So uh, please, Kezia, if you, can, if, you, if you can go to the next slide, uh, just a short introduction, because Parma is a medium-sized city in, um, in the north of Italy. It's about uh, more or less 200,000 inhabitants. And uh, it, it's, uh, let's say, typical uh, city that has a, a, a really long, long history. So the uh, structure, the urban structure is, uh, let's say, uh, quite typical concerning the, the, the average of the Italian uh, cities with the historical center with, uh, with, uh, which is, uh, let's say, uh, born uh, in, in the Middle Ages, so with narrow streets and uh, old buildings, uh, historical buildings. Uh, let's say a more modern, uh, let's say urban and residential area, and then another part of the municipality that it is uh, uh, made, let's say, practically, let's say, uh, more small houses and uh, small uh, buildings in a rural area, pr practically, uh, because we, are, we lie in, uh, let's say, in, in uh, Pianura Padana, which is, let's say, a flat, uh, one of the largest plain in, uh, in the north of Italy. Um, Parma is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, typical also of what compose of the, let's say, it, it's a touristic destination. So there are uh, a lot of uh, business activities, especially restaurants, bars, and uh, also it's a university center. So there are a lot of uh, people uh, coming from outside the, the province of Parma that study in, uh, inside the city. So more or less uh, 16,000 people that uh, we can, we must consider when talking about uh, uh, waste, manage waste management uh, features. We can go to the next uh, slide. Uh, so 
when we uh, let's say started uh, in our uh, path the situation was uh, let's say the, the situation that is typical of some of the uh, cities in italy in italy we have um, we can say we have the best and worst experience in terms of uh, waste management uh, but we can also benefit of uh, let's say of uh, some uh, excellence uh, around the territory um, small cities uh, small villages but also medium-sized city like parma but also let's say more and more uh, um, cities of a big dimension that uh, are starting to uh, follow the uh, correct path towards zero waste in effect um, when we started in 2012 the uh, situation was uh, let's say stagnant that means that uh, uh, we have 48% um, of uh, rate of separate collection, high production uh, uh, urban waste uh, volume, and uh, uh, most of the territory was uh, served with uh, big uh, containers, uh, not, uh, let's say, even not, uh, let's say, um, attended or, uh, let's say, uh, with the free access. So every 24 hour you can have access and put in, uh, inside also uh, any kind of uh, waste, uh, even if there were, uh, let's say, road containers dedicated to uh, different materials, so plastic, uh, paper, and so on, uh, there's no, uh, let's say, control on it. And so uh, this was uh, um, a low rate of separate collection but also a bad, very bad, bad quality of the selected material, because uh, let's say no, no matter what, what you can put in, so there was no control on this. Um, more or less, uh, the discussion was uh, about, let's say, constructing uh, um, and the construction of a new incinerator inside the city of Parma at the time that were, uh, let's say, uh, the policy uh, of uh, the regional policy that every territory must have uh, must be responsible of their own uh, urban waste. No, after that was uh, the law was changed, and the city of Parma was responsible for about forty percent of the world waste production in the territory in the province of Parma. More than that, there were uh, high incinerating costs, uh, even for, uh, for materials sent away from, uh, from the, the province, and, uh, and also uh, the bad quality of the uh, selected material uh, reflect in the low packaging recycling incomes. That means that, uh, as you uh, know, uh, in Italy, but also in other countries in, around Europe, there is a, a system that recognizes, uh, let's say, according to the quality of the material that can be recycled, uh, that are collected by the municipality and the waste management company, recognize a certain type of, uh, let's say, revenues in terms of, uh, let's say, compared to the quality. So uh, the bad quality reflect on low packaging recycling incomes. And that, and that uh, let's say, uh, mean also uh, higher cost of the total cost of the, the um, let's say the total cost of the service that reflects on the, on the tax on the waste bill. Um, we can go to the next uh, next um, uh, slide. Uh, in uh... what was the motivation and inspiration behind Parma's decision to become a zero waste in the first place? Okay, Kasia, this is let's say that the point that. Um, um, the experience of, uh, let's say, introducing a capsite collection and also the pay as you throw system um, was, the, let's say, the first time that was introduced in a city of dimension like Parma. In effect, uh, a lot of the push was um, the political debate that were before the election of 2012 was greatly influenced by this the construction of uh, incinerators. Um, at the end, uh, the two parties uh, uh, having uh, they have the uh, they had the opposite view of the waste management policy. There was there was one that um, was supporting uh, zero waste policies and uh, let's say uh, 
making uh, the most of the value of the resource that we can get from uh, from waste and the other one that was let's say the old school that was uh, uh, believing that in uh, incinerated crude uh, let's say resolve uh, any problem um, at the end of the battle of <laughs> unfortunately was failed uh, in, uh, from this point of view, but these, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the political debate that was um, after that, uh, so because we won the election, and we, we, we were, uh, let's say, at the time, uh, took at the government of the, of the city, but there, there was a, a high level of consciousness about waste management that was inside the city after that and this was let's say uh, i believe the great the great push that we get in having the possibility of uh, uh, let's say um, having this kind of conscience to change the waste management uh, scheme the collection scheme from the road waste container to the uh, pay as you throw and cap site collection. That is not, let's say, uh, an easy path to follow, especially in a big uh, city like, uh, big cities, medium sized city like, like Parma. Um, I also uh, say, must say that uh, this uh, path was uh, followed by very, very fast approach uh, and uh, in at the end we demonstrate that the uh, let's say um, our battle was right because uh, the incinerator was built to uh, let's say to follow a territory the, and dimension for 120 000 tons per year and after uh, less than two years that we introduced curbside collection the territory of Parma so the whole province of Parma was producing uh, 40 44,000 tons uh, per, uh, per year so that means that uh, by um, doing this process, uh, you, there is no sense in building and constructing new uh, plant uh, like this one. But um, rather, is uh, really, really important to um, to make to study at the national level this a phase out uh, phase out strategy of uh, let's say incinerators. Okay, next one. Great. So. How did you then decide which policies were the biggest priority to implement first when you had already made the decision to set um, on this journey? Okay, this is, let's say, um, quite a simple and uh, complex question because uh, um, there are a number of actions that you need to take in consideration when introducing the waste strategy in an urban cost and context uh, like, uh, like the one we have. But let me say that the most simple thing that we can do is copy because uh, in effect, as I told you before, there are a number of um, a number of uh, let's say experience, good quality experience uh, uh, in Italy, but also in Europe that uh, has already uh, let's say face this problem uh, before us. And in effect, um, as I was let's say a citizen, part of an environmental association. I was uh, let's say I have the uh, I was lucky in having a, a good. Uh, re a network of relationship uh, with, uh, let's say, zero waste members, but also with uh, uh, administrators who follow this path uh, before us. So, when the first thing I, I do when I uh, was nominated as deputy mayor in the city of Parma, it was to uh, to on board, uh, let's say, the local waste management company but also the technical staff of the municipality to start a series of study tours that we made around uh, Italy uh, to uh, see how they face uh, the problem that we will, they, they, will, they, should, uh, they uh, should have in, 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 uh, in the following. Um, with uh, let's say a series of experience that uh, let's say we 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 find around Italy, we we have been at, uh, to Capannori in, um, in Toscana, which is let's say let me say the the, the very beginning uh, the virus that then uh, generated zero waste uh, uh, strategies around Europe, 
and also we get uh, to bigger cities like uh, Treviso and also Trento in the north of Italy. And we take the benefit of their experience because uh, the path is not simple, but the, the path will be, uh, let's say, uh, full of, uh, let's say, mistakes and also correction. But uh, uh, let's, let me say that uh, to benefit of the experience of those who have already made uh, this, uh, this part will, uh, will is, will, uh, has been, let's say, the right choice for me. And also, uh, in my opinion, the most important step uh, are choose the right collection scheme. Uh, for me, and uh, I think that curbside collection and pay as you throw, but uh, not for me, but by uh, evidence of the data that we get from uh, this experience is the right model. Uh, it's also really important to make a plan. So uh, to have an idea of where you want to go, where you want to be at the end of um, a cycle, a cycle of five years, 10 years. And, and also in, uh, it's, it's really important to invest in information and uh, put on, uh, let's say, in, uh, in, in action, all uh, the uh, prevent, uh, production prevention uh, action that you, uh, let's say, uh, can do in a, a, a local level. Obviously, um, the local level as a part of uh, this uh, responsibility, and let me say one of the biggest one, because uh, is uh, is where you decide to 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 make the change, but also that there is an important part that is uh, a national level or a regional level, in case um, in case of Italy. Okay, Casia, next one. Do you have any other examples of um, cities or places to visit? You mentioned a few Italian places, and they were already best practices in two thousand twelve when you started, but. Could you give some tips to the audience of other good places to go and get good practices from, especially for a little bit bigger cities? But in, in Italy, we have Milan that has, uh, let's say, it, uh, it's, a, it's a really large city. And we, we, we also um, have exchange of experience uh, with them, they, they came to visit us uh, to, to see how to, good in to put in practice the pay as you throw system because they started the uh, um, uh, capsite collection. They started, uh, let's say, to get very, very good results uh, in terms of, uh, so it, uh, it's, uh, let's say, it's a big, uh, a big city. And uh, we also get, uh, let's say, experience, uh, share experience with uh, some uh, Spanish cities. Uh, we have a visit from Barcelona, we have visit from uh, New York City, um, let me say Ljubljana also in Slovenia is a good, uh, a good example of a uh, good practice that we, we, you, you, can, uh, you can have. Uh, but there are a number, so say, uh, let's say, uh, good experience that you can find around Europe and also around the world, uh, let me say. Um, this, this is, uh, let's say, uh, I think it's, uh, it's the, the, um, the most, uh, one of the uh, important points that can push uh, an administrator that uh, sometimes is not uh, that knowledge, is not, uh, let's say, the, the correct, uh, the, the right uh, tools to, to evaluate what is uh, best for the cities or not. Uh, to have uh, an example that to follow. Uh, and so I, I'm, I think there are uh, now examples that uh, are um, good to follow uh, at uh, most level, let's say, let me say small villages, uh, medium-sized city like Parma, but also uh, big, uh, let's say big, uh, big cities, capital cities uh, around, uh, around Europe are, are, uh, can share good examples. Great, thank you for that. Um, you have mentioned the curbside collection and the pay as you throw system as an important steps for Parma in the road to zero waste. So could you talk us through a little bit more how you implemented those practices and we have the timeline of how Parma did it 
here on this yeah. screen. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is the timeline where we did it. Um, it's important to act fast because, uh, let's say, um, in, in this process, uh, let me say, you are changing the behavior of the citizens. But uh, is, I make this also always this example. When you change, uh, let's say, an administrator change uh, the sense or the way of the road, uh, or let's say make a, an intervention in a, in, a, in a urban district or another, it change, let's say, um, only those, um, it can affect only those who uh, pass through this way or, uh, or let's say, if, uh, go, to, go there uh, sometimes. When you change waste management uh, collection scheme, you change the habits of all the, the citizen of the cities. So, when you are changing that, uh, especially in passing from, uh, let's say, curbside collection, uh, from road containers uh, free with free access to curbside collection, you, you must do it very fast because um, one of the, let's say, most evident uh, change that uh, people have that they don't find the containers on the road that, uh, with free access. So uh, typically when you start with a district, with a, an area to uh, remove the road containers, people go to the other uh, neighborhood where the road containers are still available. And so this is not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, not correct uh, and not uh, useful, not, uh, let's say, uh, efficient for the, the, the system. But, uh, and so that's why you need to act, uh, let's say, quite fast to complete all, uh, let's say, the, um, the change in all the district in a, a quite fast, quite fast time. Um, we started in, uh, let's say, 2012, uh, end of the, the year, and less than two and a half year, we completed the, the, uh, the plan. Um, completed the plan also by introducing pay as you throw system, that is another important part of the uh, job that you have to do. Um, let me say that uh, uh, when you are approaching these, uh, you, uh, you have the, uh, clear ideas in the beginning. So you have to analyze the collection model that best suited to the reality of the urban contest. Um, the bench, we said uh, before about the benchmark, you have to say with the other cities in order to, to benefit of the, the, the good practice that they have. Uh, and also that it's important to, uh, let's say, um, we, we started with the feasibility study that was, uh, let's say, managed by the uh, local waste management company. And, uh, and then to start all the other actions. So introduce the door-to-door uh, -to -door collection, remove the containers, uh, uh, make a lot of information about for, uh, for citizen, activate all the channels of information because uh, um, all the people, uh, let's say, need to, to be, uh, let's say, uh, aware of uh, what are the difference between the before and after. Um, and so we made a lot of, uh, let's say, meetings uh, or using, uh, let's say, uh, even uh, multimedia uh, information through the different channels, web, the, the TV, the press, and so on. And, and then you, let's say, that with this, uh, uh, with this plan, you, uh, you, you can have, let's say, um, a very, very good uh, result uh, in uh, also in, in the medium term. So we, we get result uh, in less than two years, we get very, very good uh, uh, higher um, uh, level. We reached the, um, I, we, I told you that we started with eight, eight, 80, 48%, and then we reached 81% separate collection rate. But what the most important, uh, uh, that we reduce, uh, uh, let's say, uh, almost less than 100 kilograms per inhabitant per year, the, um, the residual waste. Uh, the guidelines you need to, to take in consideration 
for the, for uh, for this change are uh, uh, economic with the pay as you throw system but also the uh, what uh, what you have uh, uh, to consider the um, environmental uh, sensibility of the population that is not uh, for uh, for all the citizens but uh, from a big, bigger part it is and also to to have a social accessibility of the change that uh, you can uh, you, you introduce with the bottom up, uh, let's say, action. Great. Um, there's some questions from the audience related to the curbside collection and uh, pay as you throw. Um, did your initial policy uh, related to the pay as you throw system change from the initial to what it is now? A lot, a lot, a lot of changes, a lot of changes. I, I am some. I, I stop. Uh, let's say one time to 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 count all the um, let's say minor changes. Let me say something minor, something something uh, uh, something not so minor, but uh, um, taking in consideration, taking let's say uh, the consideration that the collection scheme was uh, let's say uh, has remained the same so uh, capsite collection and pay as you told was not uh, in discussion but for example uh, we started um, let's say collecting uh, uh, starting saying uh, uh, people to deliver the material in um, in the morning so they deliver the beans and uh, the bags uh, uh, in the morning before eight o'clock uh, and then we realized that this was not so performant in terms of, uh, let's say, having too, 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 for too long uh, beans and bags uh, on the road, so especially in the touristic street and in the city center was not so good. And so we started, uh, we changed it and we, we said to people to uh, start uh, delivering um, the, the, uh, the beans and the material in their day of calendar in the evening after nine o'clock. So that, that was uh, one of the, the biggest change we made. And so mo more and more, uh, many other, let's say, uh, small changes that we, um, we also uh, take benefit of the, um, what we call a permanent observatory that was, uh, let's say, set up after uh, one year, the after the start where, uh, let's say, there was a, a periodical meetings of all the stakeholders that are interested in this process. So that means uh, um, association of uh, business owners, small business, uh, small shops, uh, association of environmental association, representative of the citizen of uh, different, let's say, categories uh, that uh, are involved in this, um, in this uh, process. And then we get also some, uh, let's say, uh, constant uh, feedback from the, from the citizen in order to, uh, to make all the changes that uh, we need to, to make. Great. Um... Um, some other questions related to the same scheme. Um, did you have some ob objectives? Um, so here we had the overall separate collection rate and also the residual waste and bio waste targets. But did you also have some targets for recyclables like uh, paper, glass or plastics? Yes, we have, we have also that about that, uh, but um, I I believe these are, are most let's say interesting one because the uh, the outcome that you reduce the residual waste that you have a, a better uh, quality in the, let's say uh, paper, plastics, and then glass that are the other uh, streams that we have. And, uh, but um, I believe that the most important KPI is the reduction of residual waste, but is uh, because it's the one where uh, we uh, measure the pay as you throw system. Uh, so people uh, that, uh, uh, let's say, in the former uh, situation, the, um, let's say, were the, were without the pay as you throw, 
all the citizen pay no matter what they produce in terms of residual waste. And so in, by introducing this system, all the citizens are also uh, involved and push it to uh, follow, let's say, the economic leverage. That means that uh, uh, the less that you produce in terms of residual waste, uh, the less that you pay. Uh, and so, let's say, uh, by consequence, you have a better quality of uh, the other, um, the other uh, materials, the other streams of material. Great. And uh, one more question from the audience before we move on. Uh, where does the 19% of residual waste go now? Sorry? Where does the residual waste um, go that is left, that is not recycled so far? Uh, it goes to incineration. Uh, actually, the, the, as I told you, that the, 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 the in Emilia Romagna, uh, let's say after uh, two or years that we, um, we started uh, in, um, in um, let's say, in our political mandate, uh, well, the law was changed, so there was no no longer the um, responsibility of the urban territory, but there was uh, uh, the, the change that uh, the urban waste can circulate between the region, but also uh, in, in a certain way, the national level. Then, so, so some, um, actually, let me say that in Emilia Romagna, the uh, residual waste are, uh, are uh, um, circulating for uh, the, the, through the uh, different uh, incinerators that are active, uh, active right now. Right. Um, then let's move on. Um, you already mentioned a little bit um, how the community was engaged and how it was a very much a bottom-up approach and communications and uh, awareness raising were big parts of uh, the success. So let's then next talk about a little bit more in detail what you have done there. And there's also some examples coming. How okay. you do so, yeah. Could you share some lessons and best practices of the um, awareness raising activities you have done? Okay, so for me, the communication plan um, is an integral and fundamental part of the successful introduction of the new collection scheme. But for what the day that I say, you are changing the habits of every single citizen. So, um, in effect, we identified and categorized the users so uh, that were uh, domestic and non-domestic. That means uh, private citizen or uh, shops or uh, or other, uh, let's say, uh, activities, so restaurant, uh, offices, uh, bars, and so on and so on. And also to um, reference. Uh, uh, to, go to uh, to target also what are the uh, the other stakeholders or trade association condominium managers school universities uh, foreign communities scouts uh, neighborhood councils uh, and we develop let's say um, a multi-channel communication plan using traditional media or local press and tv but also web and social media uh, but also let's say face-to-face -face meetings so I, I was personally uh, taking part in uh, in uh, public meetings every every time we started uh, let's say a, a new uh, change in the new district we, we started with a series of public meetings uh, uh, but uh, that what was important that were me as a political uh, administrator there was the um, waste management company and also the uh, technician of the municipality so all together facing the problems facing the questions facing uh, let's say all the the complaints that people have uh, because everyone has his own, let's say, uh, let's say, his own <laughs> receipt of what we we, we must do in in this uh, in this matter, and so say we invited also so expert uh, to to do seminars. Uh, we started an open and information point in the neighborhood that were always open. Uh, we make uh, conferences, workshop, uh, and and also we 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 started a meeting also with uh, this uh, uh, series of uh, 
specific stakeholders. For example, we make uh, meetings with foreign groups like, uh, let's say, uh, Senegalese group, uh, the Islamic, uh, local Islamic um, association. We meet uh, the shop owners, uh, the scouts, uh, the building administrator, and, and we also develop, uh, as you can see, uh, a new portal uh, dedicated uh, um, to the information that is very, very, uh, let's say, punctual and precise. They can give you even <laughs> the uh, information of the, uh, the waste bin that are around the, the, the city, where they are and when they are supposed to be emptied. So uh, people can give us a feedback uh, of uh, the, if there is something that is not working. And so, so this is like, in, I think that it was uh, really appreciated in, uh, in this phase. Right, um, there's a question from the audience asking, does the municipality promote home composting? And if yes, do you have any idea what percentage uh, of the community compost at home? So we have uh, promoted home, home composting by with different action. We have, uh, let's say, um, for those who having a, a garden, because not uh, not everyone can can do that. But uh, for those having a, a garden in their uh, in their home, we uh, promote uh, home composting by giving a twelve. 12% discount on the waste bill if they they do that and we get let's say 1000 uh, families that apply that to the scheme obviously they can be controlled with a, let's say, some spot control that we, we performed with the, the local uh, police but well, let's say this was one of the action but then we also started uh, promoting um, some uh, initiative around uh, let's say the different district there was uh, some uh, let's say some association doing um, composting in uh, in their uh, let's say areas uh, garden areas uh, or also we we develop uh, together with the local association um, composting uh, training courses that was uh, let's say uh, trained by uh, an expert uh, about uh, this so this is i think uh, it's uh, it's let's say a part that can be uh, useful in order to uh, for what concerns the prevention prevention uh, action right um so we have spoken quite a bit about what the starting situation in Parma was and what kind of changes you made. So then let's go into detail what kind of impacts all these changes had. Uh, so you started at 48% uh, separate collection rate, which is pretty much average uh, on the European level and went on to be a very high performing city. So let's see how, how that compares to the rest of Europe and Italian cities as well. Yes, I did, I did, let's say, the, the comparison, if you go to the next slide, uh, because it's quite interesting to, 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 um, to do this comparison, because in, inside the um, Regione Emilia-Romagna, which is, uh, let's say, in Italy, as, um, it's, it's better to compare this in, between the regions, uh, between the region, because every region has, uh, let's say, an, a specific uh, law, uh, that uh, could uh, differ from uh, from the one to the another. Um, it's interesting to see this uh, table because uh, uh, you can see, let's say, um, these are the capital cities in Emilia Romagna that are more or less the same uh, urban, uh, let's say, context, structure, uh, dimension, so and so similar. And uh, at that time, um, uh, Parma was the only one that has introduced uh, curbside collection and pay as you throw. So uh, you can see the difference, and that was, that's why I, I was telling that uh, uh, residual waste is the most important KPI. But you can see that uh, the difference from the worst case that is Parma to the so to the best case that is Parma. To the worst case that is Ravenna, there is a difference of uh, more or less a triple. So um, sometimes, uh, in some some cases, you can have uh, 
the same, uh, let's say, uh, percentage of uh, separate collection, but uh, with the production uh, that is uh, it's, uh, considerably, uh, let's say, higher compared to the one to the other. So that's why I think that the residual waste per inhabitant and per year, I think is the most important KPI to consider when you, uh, you have to evaluate the performance of, uh, of the system. And also by consequence, the bio waste that normally, normally goes when you don't have, uh, when you have a f uh, road containers with free access, um, normally uh, you find in the residual waste container a lot of uh, what is bio waste. And yeah, you can find the, uh, let's say the, the, the table is clear, and you can see that they say uh, that uh, this is uh, clear, the numbers uh, that can say that. Um, and also, if you can go to the next slide, then there is another part, let's say, that can, we can compare um, that is related to the, economical, um, the economics of the, the waste bill. Um, the, the slide on the left, um, the chart on the left is uh, uh, about the uh, path followed by Parma. And then you can see where uh, we started in 2012. Uh, 2013 and 2014 was the years where we invested a lot, uh, let's say in communication, in uh, new, new containers, new some uh, action. Uh, and so that's why the, the uh, cost rise uh, in these two years, but then, Practically, uh, slowly uh, came, no, slowly, uh, fastly, uh, let's say, uh, low down uh, up to uh, less than before we started. So that means that in a, in a normal uh, condition, pay as you throw uh, proved to be the, the cheapest uh, option for, uh, for citizens. And also you can see comparison between uh, let's say different capital city in the uh, region Emilia Romagna. And you can see that uh, even in this case, uh, Parma with the PSGTRO can uh, as one of the best performance uh, between uh, the other. It's interesting to say also because uh, in order to compare, uh, let's say uh, cities that are comparable, Parma, uh, Reggio Emilia and Piacenza as the same waste management company. So also this can be, let's say, in a, a KPI saying that uh, the same uh, family of three person in uh, living in a 100 square meter apartment in Parma pay 234 uh, euro per year, in Reggio Emilia pay 303. Uh, and this was, uh, let's say, the situation in 2000, uh, 2017. Great. Um, so yeah, zero waste should still start from waste prevention. So good separate collection and recycling is great, but uh, zero waste starts from preventing waste from happening uh, in the first place. And that's how you get the low numbers of total waste generation. So um, we have spoken about it a little bit of the different activi activities that Parma took in that aspect. So could you share a little bit more details of the different waste prevention activities that you did and, and the successes and maybe um, the challenges that you had on the way? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm, I, I only put uh, some of them because there are a lot of, but uh, the first one was, uh, let's say, um, talking about bottled water, introducing public water dispensers. Uh, this is, let's say, um, was introduced uh, in a different, uh, let's say, uh, area of the cities. And, uh, so people can have uh, uh, what is, uh, let's say, what are that come from the from the net, uh, avoiding to uh, produce, uh, let's say, plastic bottles, and also to consume and produce, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, this type of waste. Uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, avoided energy in uh, production and transport of uh, these uh, four hundred thousand liters. Uh, uh, per month, uh, we can say that we uh, can uh, avoid the production of uh, 1,000, uh, 11,000 uh, uh, 
kilograms of plastics uh, save uh, uh, a series of, of uh, pollution, pollutants like, say, 267 kilograms of sulfur oxide, and so on and so on and so on. So this, uh, uh, let's say, a practical in, uh, let's say, uh, action that we do. But uh, the, the other one that we did in the, in the next slide that you can, uh, that um, I'm very proud of it, was uh, that was uh, uh, the elimination of a plastic bottle in school canteens. That means that uh, uh, all the schools that has a canteen in the city of Parma, so more than 93 schools in, um, in uh, more than 60,000 uh, children, 16,000 children involved, were changing the habits from uh, um, having plastic bottles to uh, use the tap water, obviously with the, let's say, all, all a series of uh, controls. Uh, the, um, also in this case, we made a, a series of public meetings, especially what uh, for the pupils that uh, some of the, um, let's say, the, the parents were, uh, let's say, worried about the quality. So we, we, we get a, a lot of, let's say, meetings also with the local uh, supplying, uh, water supplying company, but also with the, the um, what, uh, let's say, the sanitary uh, authorities that uh, gave, uh, um, let's say, uh, sh sh gave information about the quality and the control that uh, every day are made on, on the tap water. And these, I think, were uh, successful ones. And also put one that was not successful, but in our case, Case, but um, sometimes we, we can say that uh, in some other countries, in some other contests, as uh, started uh, and, uh, and go, go as well, what, what are, let's say, the eco vending machines? That means that you, you we have put with the, with the local company um, a series of uh, these, uh, let's say, vending machines. Let's say where you put a, a bottle and they give, give, us, give us back, uh, let's say, a bonus, a discount, and so on. And this was not, uh, let's say, since the, um, the company that managed this was, uh, let's say, supposed to, to take in, uh, in, into account uh, to have uh, economical benefit of that was not so successful like, like we imagined. But anyway, this was, let's say, a, a, minor, uh, a minor problem. We're talking about, um, let's say, uh, this kind of... Um, uh, prevention action. We also introduced the reuse center. We introduced the eco fest that are, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, summer festival with uh, uh, compostable dishes or to, with the good practice. Um, we introduced washable diapers in the kindergarten. And we, and we also introduce a series of action, like I told you before, like in the composting facilities or the, the compo, um, compo sharing training action that was uh, uh, taking place in uh, some of the association of the, of the cities. And these are, let's say, um, some of the um, prevention action that uh, you must take into account uh, to introduce uh, and that can uh, give us a uh, benefit in terms of uh, reducing the impact of uh, the production of waste at the source. Great. Um, could you summarize out of all these, the five most important actions that the city uh, can and should take to make these like big jumps towards zero waste? Okay, so uh, very, very shortly, um, I, all, I, I may say make a plan. So uh, start with a clear idea of what you want to, uh, where you want to be at the end of the process. Choose uh, the right collection scheme, in my opinion, but also uh, by having evidence of the data, curbside collection and pay as you draw. Uh, is proved to be the most effective method of collection. Information communication are uh, fundamental for this um, for this process. Uh, involve all the citizen and the association to be part of the change, and also uh, from let's say the political uh, point of view, a strong political commitment is uh, is needed when you are an administrator 
and uh, you have to pursue this uh, goal uh, at the local level. Great. Um, so yeah, local authorities have a big uh, role to play in making this success and also um, there can be help coming from the national level. Could you share some um, like the role that the local authorities had in making this success and also some examples of the uh, national local level collaboration? So in, in Italy, we have the, the National Association of the Municipalities, and that was, um, let's say, a good place uh, to share this, uh, this kind of uh, experiences and also to interact with the national government uh, about the, uh, what has the suggestion that can come from the bottom. I believe that uh, national level is, is in Italy is not so, say, let's say, uh, can do more. Well, let me say they, they, they can do more. Uh, they are uh, not so, uh, let's say, uh, I think that the experience come from the bottom and the experience, uh, uh, the, what, uh, what uh, is needed to, to do in this field uh, um, are part of the knowledge of the uh, mayors and the municipalities. Um, in Italy, the regional authority is more uh, important than the national in terms of waste management, in my opinion. The, uh, at least uh, this is my experience. And also, I, I believe that uh, the European level is more important than the national one in, uh, in Italy. Um, I don't remember, uh, let's say, a good uh, example of law or practice uh, coming from the national level in, in recent times, uh, sincerely. Uh, so th this, this is, this is uh, let's say, obviously my opinion, but um, I must say that in my experience. Great. Um... So you have played a big role in the success of Parma. Could you share us with your proudest moment or achievement through all this? And then on the other hand, is there something that you regret uh, during your time as a deputy mayor? In effect, uh, let's say, I, I believe that um, I, we are in 2021 and um, I stopped my political mandate in 2017. Now I, I'm, I'm doing, a, uh, let's say, a, diff a completely different job. And also uh, I, I frequently receive uh, um, call by like this one to, to, to testify and to, to share the experience made in, uh, in this um, in this experience in this five-year political mandate so I'm very proud of that and also um, I'm happy to uh, be uh, helpful for those who, can, who want to follow this path so this I think is uh, let's say my my best uh, let's say medal that I can uh, achieve in my in my experience and obviously my greatest re regret uh, for not having the possibility to stop the construction of this generator probably we arrive too late uh, at the late uh, of the local government but i believe this uh, uh, has been uh, let's say uh, let's say a good um, let's say a good lesson that uh, as uh, make a change uh, also in uh, in uh, in uh, in the mind of those who were thinking that uh, let's say incineration was uh, the only uh, path possible. I think I believe that was uh, let's say uh, even if the the, the say the, the construction go, goes on and and uh, and uh, actually is running. I believe that. Uh, the consciousness about uh, that it was a, a useful and unuseful plant for uh, the local territory as uh, as, uh, as reach all, uh, all the part of the society. Great. Um, what about the future plans of Parma? Lots has happened. Um, do you know what, what are the future plans of Parma to even improve further? Or do you have any ideas what Parma should be doing? Uh, to improve in the future? Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer in charge of this, but uh, I'm still in contact with, because the mayor is the same uh, as, as it was in, in, the, in my, uh, during my experience. Uh, 
I, I know that let's say they, they are they are making the fine tuning of the system because the the, the most of uh, has been done. You need to invest a lot. Uh, you still invest in uh, in information, uh, and this is uh, this is a thing that you must be uh, taking uh, in um, active for let's say uh, forever, um, and also that the. Can uh, I, I believe that uh, some uh, small changes can can be done in order to improve uh, even um, even more the performance on the system? That means, uh, for example, we have uh, uh, still uh, two streams of container that are uh, on the road actually that are glass and garden waste that can be uh, let's say. Uh, put in a door-to-door -door collection uh, scheme and also they say to be more uh, um, making the um, pay as you throw more uh, convenient for those that are virtuous. This, these are two, two things that I I, I, I will, uh, I would uh, have done if I have been uh, again in, uh, let's say in this, uh, in this uh, uh, local government. Good. Um, we have a couple of minutes time for questions and there is something in the queue already in the Q&A function. Uh, something to ask about the pay as you throw system. When you introduced it, did you see any increase in illegal dumping when it first um, started? In effect, we, we, we perceive an increase of littering, but at the end, when we studied, let's say, it was, let's say, at the time, at the time, the, um, the let's say, daily debate was a lot of on waste management, so the, on the press, there was a, uh, often the picture of uh, situation with littering and so on. But when we studied the, the data, we found that the, the increase were re really, really uh, lower than we expected. And in effect, after, uh, let's say, sometimes uh, the, the, the information came back to the, to the normality and the standard. Um, I believe that um, one of the, the what we, um, let's say, uh, was an evidence of littering, was not about the private citizen, but also, but especially from uh, small uh, businesses. That means uh, uh, electricians or some some other, uh, let's say, small companies. Uh, usually, usually we, without having a let's say a building uh, on their own, that were uh, normally use the road containers to uh, to to let's say to manage their waste. They have to, to let's say, to, to have a, a different uh, stream that is not the in Italy the urban waste cycle, but the, the uh, special uh, and the business waste cycle. And there was the, the most of the the literature that we found um, in uh, situation. Great. Um, and then final question for today is. Um, uh, in northern countries, the deposit and return schemes, they are really successful, uh, but your eco-vending machines uh, were not so much. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on the what was the issue why the eco-vending machines were not um, as successful? But because um, let's say we started with uh, let's say making a public ban, uh, public bid, uh, founding uh, let's say comp private companies that can do that, and they they must uh, let's say sustain their activity with the incomes of the plastics uh, without having uh, any kind of support. And I think uh, that um, this was not uh, uh, possible at the time. They then the, there were uh, let's say parallel action. Uh, uh, by private supermarket that uh, has been more successful than uh, the, this one that we promoted uh, like a municipality. But uh, yes, I believe it was, let's say, not successful for us, but maybe can be, let's say, um, in a different context uh, with a different approach uh, can, can be one of the, the key to, to, to take into account. Great. Um, thank you very much for all your answers. We are running out of time for today. Uh, thank you for, for our audience, for your participation and for the questions for Gabriele. Uh, I hope you have learned a lot and find some new inspiration how to take your cities 
Zero Waste Journey to the next level. Um, the next Mission Zero Academy webinar will be in, on the 18th of January, and we will be talking about bio waste um, collection because the EU will force cities to start separate collection of bio waste in just two years. So if that's interesting for you, um, see you then. Um, thank you, Gabriele, so much for talking to us. Hi, everybody. Inspiring. Um, to hear from your experiences, from the practical experiences from the city of Parma, how you have made a big transformation. So thank you for being with us today and have a great day. Mm -hmm.